every available data source uh, on this topic, uh, whether it be surveys of cybersecurity professionals or a quantification of uh, open job positions, confirms what we already know, and that is that there is a tremendous gap uh, between supply and demand for cybersecurity professionals, uh, particularly an acute need for technical cybersecurity talent. Uh, a number of different initiatives are underway globally to address the supply part of the problem, namely in the form of uh, more robust uh, educational, formal educational opportunities and programs, uh, professional training and certifications, uh, and even competitions to identify and refine talent. Uh, however, any reasonable projection uh, in the near future still suggests that the gap is not going to close anytime soon. Uh, in the meantime, organizations can do a number of things to try to address the skills gap. Uh, obviously, there are opportunities for increased investment in security automation, uh, as well as opportunities to outsource uh, and consume services through uh, externally provided managed services. Uh, one of the most important aspects of cybersecurity, though, to keep in mind that does touch on this problem is that cybersecurity is inherently uh, an interdisciplinary cross-functional challenge. If we begin to view cybersecurity uh, as directly related to the central nervous system of an organization, uh, the uh, critical infrastructure that ties together all of the parts of the organization uh, that both uh, receives sensory input as well as provides guidance uh, back out to its many parts and communicates with the outside world and to its many partners and suppliers. Uh, and the data that is residing within the organization and used to make uh, important business decisions and ultimately do uh, what the organization is designed to do. Uh, if we begin to view the problem that way, uh, then we realize that in fact this touches on much more than just the IT department uh, with some help from the HR department, which is often how cybersecurity uh, tends to be viewed. When we realize the, the cross-functional cross and interdisciplinary nature of the problem, uh, then we can begin to engage all parts of the organization with leaders from legal and finance to IT and operations to sales and marketing, recognizing that every part of the business, every part of the organization uh, manages important sensitive data and information and uh, has an influence in the type of systems and tools that are used uh, to perform as many functions. When we can do that, uh, then we begin to engage other people in the problem, and whether they be legal uh, and finance uh, professionals that are tied to compliance and audit requirements, uh, or the handling of sensitive information by uh, sales and marketing professionals regarding partners and customers, uh, to non-security oriented IT professionals that begin to contribute to the security problem and solving it, uh, then we begin to address not just the supply part of the problem, but actually the demand side of it, meaning the organizations that need cybersecurity in the first place can begin to leverage a broader uh, set of resources and a broader number of people that are already working there to begin to secure the data and the systems uh, upon which the organization relies and which are so critical to achieving a higher state of cybersecurity. Hi, I'm Alyssa Miller, Application Security Advocate for Sneak, and the topic is the cyber skills gap. So there's a lot of discussion in the cybersecurity community about this skills gap and the trouble that corporations are having in hiring skilled cybersecurity individuals. And as we look at that problem, I think one of the key issues we're seeing, and I hear this all the time from my colleagues, um, I've seen it in the research I've done, is that our job descriptions are wildly unrealistic. Um, if you look at uh, job descriptions that are out there today, you'll see things where entry-level positions are asking for a CISSP certification. Anybody who knows about that certification, you have to have five years of experience just to get it. Um, you know, I've seen other things that just ask for either wild amounts of technology experience that no single one person could have. I've even seen impossible things like 12 years of AWS experience. Well, unless you're Jeff Bezos, you probably don't have that level of experience. So, um, you know, I, I think that's one of the big barriers we have right now in the industry is just getting job descriptions out there that are sensible and will attract the right people that we want to apply for those jobs. 
The problem with this is far reaching. As these positions stay open for a long period of time, it puts extra stress on the rest of our security uh, teams. And we see this, the turnover is almost astronomical in the cybersecurity community. The average time on the job, the last study I saw said it was two and a half years. Um, that's not because salaries are high. That's because people are getting burned out in their jobs and they're leaving to go to other cybersecurity jobs. They're not leaving for more money. They're leaving for environments where they feel they, uh, you know, they have a better balance. And so the, the struggle becomes, how do we continue to secure our systems when our teams are in these positions? And the fact is we have to start looking internally. We have to start looking at who are those folks within our organization who have a desire to, to expand their skills into security. And we need to start looking at how do we develop those people? How do we start to enable them? How do we provide training and opportunities for them to show what they can do in security? So it's a long road. We've got a lot of work to do, but those are my thoughts on the cybersecurity skills gap. My name is Anthony Israel Davis, and I'm a senior manager for, in R&D. One way to fill the skills gap is outsourcing, and it's a great way to do that. There are short staffed teams, they need the help, and hiring, having somebody outside of the team is great. However, outsourcing does have its limitations. First, often when you outsource, you're only filling one particular control niche. So they're not filling an entire need for your security controls. So that's something to be considering. Second is that you need somebody to be able to consume whatever that outsource resource is providing. So if you're getting information, if you're getting vulnerability reports, somebody needs to be able to consume that information and then turn that into actionable business activities in order to be able to consume uh, the risk. So they'd be able to determine what actually it is they're getting. And finally, when you outsource, you spread the risk, which can be good, but it can also be a challenge because you need to have very clear boundaries about what that risk is, who is responsible for what, and how to respond once something comes in, such as a breach report or something that looks like it needs immediate action. Hi, my name is Stuart Coulson, Director of Hidden Text and Freelance Consultant. I believe the skills gap is a twofold issue. We can't hire and we can't train fast enough. Firstly, the amount of available people with an interest in our industry is growing. They're enthusiastic and passionate about a career. However, that is not good enough to pass the current HR processes. And as a result, candidates become despondent and take other IT roles instead. Secondly, the myriad of technologies is such that training may only be relevant for one technology stack and when a talented individual applies for other roles, they may find the hiring company doesn't recognise the transferable skills. They can't put a tick in a box, they don't hire the candidate. So, companies need to go back to basics. Number one, don't look for the unicorns. Those one in 1,000 people. Currently, companies are discounting 999 other talented individuals who could grow in that company. Number two, don't advertise hyper-specific requirements in job roles. Understand the ideal candidate may not apply if they cannot tick all the boxes. Number three, instead of a keyword search, HR team, allow them to do basic filters, but then be guided by the managers that will be looking after these people. Look for the transferable skills. Number four, instead of a full interview, which can put off neurodiverse candidates, Consider putting in scenario and or competence-based tests, which will then allow a candidate to demonstrate their passion and ability. Doing these will identify passionate talent that can actually do the job, despite not necessarily ticking all the hyper-specific boxes on the job advert. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, my name is Chloe Mazdaghi and I'm here to give some feedback on how to recruit and also how to retain your employees. Now, it's really important to show that you care about your employees. And by doing that is by doing something, meaning provide training for them, have one-on-ones with them, find out what their goals are and create a roadmap together and see them go and hit that goal. And the best way how to do this is be that manager that wants to see their employees succeed them in life and are cheering them on in the entire time way. Now, it's also important to have that conversation 
with your team about work and life balance because burnout is prevalent in InfoSec. And whenever people are burned out, it's a mental health issue. And in return, what happens is that it also puts security at the company at risk. So please take care of your employees and show that you care. Now, the other thing I wanna to touch on is diversity and inclusion. Today, when women are looking at jobs, they will apply only to jobs that they fit 100% of the criteria. Versus men, it's 60%. And in return, women end up applying to 20% fewer jobs than men. Even when underrepresented persons apply and are fully qualified for that position, they don't get the position still today. And the reason for that is that we have prejudices and biases that still very much exist in InfoSec because it remains unchecked and we're not doing enough to change the situation. And in reality, what's gonna keep on occurring is having this rotating door because we're not doing enough in inclusion. So in order to change that situation, please reach out to organizations that work with underrepresented persons and do whatever it takes to change the situation and make it more welcoming so then all people can be part of InfoSec without any pain. Thank you for your time and I hope that's helpful. A lot of organizations are looking for folks who have multiple years of experience in technologies that have not been around for very long. The information security environment is evolving faster than most organizations can keep up with. I think the biggest thing a company can do is to look to hire folks with transferable skills, such as a passion for security, a curiosity to tinker with how things work, and outside of the box thinking. This type of a drive is hard to teach, so organizations should hire this type of talent when they find it, and then they can teach the security skills after. In order to do that, however, it requires that organizations invest heavily in keeping their teams trained up. This obviously takes away from office time, but it is essential to keeping teams up to date with the latest threats and trends. Another very important skill is communication. Many technical folks do not necessarily understand the impact that security can have to the operation of their organization. An organization is never going to be 100% secure. So it is very important to understand the trade-offs in minimizing risk while maintaining optimal business efficiency. This is another area that organizations should spend time training their teams on. Part of the onboarding process should include some training on what it is that the business does, as well as ongoing training of the organizational goals and progress towards those goals. Small teams typically outsource many of their security functions to managed service providers or managed security service providers. When selecting these providers, it is also key to select providers that can integrate the business goals of the organization to the management of their security tools. Focus on implementing security tools with metrics that can clearly help to identify the risk to the business and activities that mitigate that risk. For example, reporting on the number of missing patches means nothing to the business, but reporting on the risk that vulnerabilities and insecure configurations present to the organization can show both the current risk posture and the impact the patching program has on mitigating the risk to the business. Only while maintaining an open dialogue of communication can these goals be achieved together. Hi, my name is Anika. I'm a senior product manager at Tripwire. I'm responsible for Expert Ops, our managed security offering. The cybersecurity skills gap has been well documented. It is getting harder and harder for security teams to hire and retain cybersecurity staff. As a result, the existing security teams often feel stretched and overwhelmed managing multiple security tools and just dealing with all of the security data that is often produced by those tools. And this is where managed security offerings can help. And organizations are actually embracing this more and more because it helps their security teams stay focused on strategic activities rather than the mundane tasks of managing yet another security tool. By adopting and embracing managed security offerings, security teams can focus on what's really important while the vendor is responsible for deploying the solution, managing it, and also providing expertise, essentially acting as an extension of your security team. So for organizations that want to insulate the security teams from the challenges of the cybersecurity skills gap, managed offerings is a great solution.